Ten years ago, it was common for bodybuilders to set their watches so that they would eat every two and a half to three hours, with the idea being that they wanted to stay as anabolic as possible, meaning they wanted to build as much muscle as possible while preventing protein breakdown. And eating every couple hours was supposed to do that. Now, these days, that doesn't happen so much. When it comes to building muscle, it's been well established that how much protein you eat in a day is way more important than how that protein is distributed. But that's not necessarily to say that protein timing doesn't matter at all. Some studies do show that eating 20 to 40 grams of protein distributed over four to five meals throughout the day can make a little bit of difference. But how much difference? And will it justify taking the time to meal prep and actually eat those meals at certain times throughout the day? Let's look at the science to find out. To build the most muscle possible, you'll want to maximally stimulate muscle protein synthesis while limiting muscle protein breakdown. But nutritional strategies to build muscle should focus more on the maximizing muscle synthesis part of the equation, since that'll have a much bigger impact on things than minimizing muscle breakdown, especially when you're eating enough calories. Eating protein is an important driver of muscle growth, not just because it's the main material used in building muscle, but also because it's been shown to turn on pathways that stimulate muscle protein synthesis. But not all protein is equal when it comes to maximizing protein synthesis. For example, whey is more powerful for triggering muscle growth than, say, egg protein, and both of these sources are superior to plant protein sources like soy and wheat. In fact, whey is superior to all other protein sources for triggering muscle synthesis, mainly because of its high essential amino acid and leucine content. The amino acid leucine is the main driver of muscle protein synthesis. It's kind of like a key that unlocks the door to muscle growth, and a certain amount of it is needed to unlock that door. About two and a half to three grams of leucine is needed in an average size male. That equates to about 20 to 40 grams of protein. It's often called the leucine threshold. So eating 20 to 40 grams of protein in one sitting will fully activate that muscle building pathway and fully open the door to muscle growth. Now, if you eat less than 20 grams of protein, that door probably isn't going to open all the way. And if you exceed 40 grams of protein in one sitting, it's not like the door is really going to open much wider. You're not going to get further benefit in terms of muscle growth from eating that extra protein, and the rest of it is just going to be oxidized and broken down and used for energy. Research shows that eating 20 to 40 grams of protein will maximize muscle protein synthesis. So it makes sense that to get the most gains, you'd want to trigger this process multiple times per day. And to some extent, this does seem to be true. In one study, researchers had 24 young men complete a weightlifting session and then looked at how different protein distributions affected muscle protein synthesis during the 12-hour period after exercise. The men each ate a total of 80 grams of whey protein that day after lifting, but they were split into three different groups based on how they distributed that protein. One ate two servings of 40 grams of whey protein, so a dose was eaten every six hours. One ate four servings of 20 grams of protein, meaning that protein was eaten every three hours. And one ate eight servings of 10 grams of protein, which would amount to eating protein every one and a half hours. Eating 20 grams of whey protein every three hours was found to be better than eating a smaller amount of protein more frequently or eating a larger amount of protein less frequently. And this seems to make sense in light of the idea that you need to eat enough protein in a sitting to hit that leucine threshold and activate muscle building. And at the same time, activating that pathway four times might lead to greater gains than activating it two times. The idea that you need at least 20 grams of protein in a sitting is supported by another study, which showed that eating 30 grams of protein spread out over three meals was better for promoting muscle synthesis than eating in a skewed pattern, where you ate the same number of meals but fell short of 20 grams of protein in a few of the meals. In this study, researchers measured muscle protein synthesis in eight healthy men and women throughout the course of the day in response to two different eating patterns, one where 30 grams of protein was spread out evenly across three meals, and in another where about 10 grams of protein was eaten for breakfast, 15 grams for lunch, and 65 grams for dinner. Muscle protein synthesis was about 25% higher on days where 30 grams of protein was eaten in three meals versus the skewed pattern. So if eating 20 to 30 grams of protein in a sitting three to four times a day is better than falling short of that threshold or eating protein, let's say, two times a day, maybe eating more could be better, right? So maybe eating four, five, six, or even more meals could be better for muscle growth. 
maybe traditional bodybuilders were onto something, slamming their protein shakes every two or two and a half hours. Well, it turns out that more isn't always better. For example, in one study, researchers continuously infused protein into the veins of six people for a period of about six hours. One might have expected muscle protein synthesis to stay high for that entire six hours that the body was receiving protein, but instead, researchers saw that muscle protein synthesis peaked at around two hours and then rapidly dropped back to baseline levels, despite continually elevated levels of protein in the blood. This suggests that eating protein too frequently wouldn't be optimal for muscle growth, since muscle protein synthesis will always drop back down after about two or two and a half hours. At least about three hours would need to pass between meals to fully trigger the muscle building pathway again. So based on the studies we've looked at so far, it seems that protein distribution does matter if your goal is to build muscle, and that you might want to eat 20 to 40 grams of protein over four meals spaced about three hours apart. But not so fast. Remember that skewed versus even protein distribution study we talked about? Well, that study was repeated with a longer design. Now, in the original study, The researchers looked at measurements of muscle protein synthesis over a 24-hour period and tried to use that to extrapolate how lean mass might change over time. Now, in this latest study that was repeated with a similar eating pattern and design, we actually looked at muscle building over the long term. So researchers looked at changes in lean mass that actually occurred over a period of several months. In this study, 41 overweight men and women ate an energy-restricted diet for four months while lifting weights. During this time, they all ate 90 grams of protein per day, but were split into two groups, one that split their protein intake evenly across the day by eating 30 grams over three meals, and another that ate 10 grams of protein at breakfast, 20 at lunch, and 60 at dinner. Over four months, body composition was measured by a DEXA scan, and it showed that both groups lost the same amount of weight and lean mass despite the differences in protein distribution. This seems to suggest that hitting the leucine threshold at each meal isn't as important for building or preserving muscle over the long term as we thought. Okay, so what about protein distribution over the long term? Wouldn't eating, say, three or four high-protein meals be better for building and preserving muscle over time than eating just like one or two meals? What can longer-term studies tell us about that? What better way to answer this question than looking at intermittent fasting studies? There are many different types of intermittent fasting regimens. Some involve going entire days without eating, whereas others might drop calories to about 600 or less, and those are called intermittent calorie restriction regimens. If protein distribution is important for preserving and maintaining muscle over time, we'd expect to see traditional diets be superior to intermittent fasting regimens where protein and calories are dropped to practically nothing for entire days. But surprisingly, that's not what we see. Several studies have come out over the past 10 years showing that fasting doesn't jeopardize muscle as much as we once thought. Many intermittent calorie restriction studies have matched total weekly calories, but compared two eating patterns. One where calories were slashed to about 25% of needs two to three days per week, with energy needs being met the other days of the week, and the other where calories were dropped every day of the week to meet 75% of energy needs. In these studies, the amount of weight loss between groups after several months was pretty comparable, which isn't too surprising since the calorie deficit was pretty equal between the groups. But what is surprising is that there was no difference in the change in lean mass between these two eating patterns. In fact, in one intermittent fasting study, those doing traditional diets lost more lean mass than those doing the fasting protocol. So why would some studies seem to point to the benefits of eating 20 to 40 grams of protein several times a day, while other studies show that there are no benefits? Well, the answer comes down to several factors, including the length of the study, the design of the study, and who the participants were. When it comes to study length, differences in muscle protein synthesis over a period of 24 hours can't possibly be expected to accurately predict changes in muscle mass and function over a longer period of, say, months or years. But muscle protein synthesis is a really awesome method for detecting short-term changes. It's really sensitive at that. But over the long term, in a real-world setting, other factors come into play that wash some of this out. How a study is designed can make a huge difference in what that study shows us. For example, in the first study we talked about, men were instructed to eat 80 grams of protein over an entire day. Now that's not a lot of protein, and it's certainly not optimal. So maybe in that case, the timing mattered a lot more than it would have if they had been given sufficient amounts of protein. 
The type of protein used and whether it was used in mixed meals might also matter. In that same study, whey protein was used, which would be expected to have a more powerful effect on muscle protein synthesis than other proteins. And whey by itself would also be absorbed and digested faster than a slower digesting source of protein paired with carbs and fat. Eating protein in mixed meals would extend the rise and fall of muscle protein synthesis, making it less necessary to try and eat every three to four hours. The studies that we've talked about today were carried out in a calorie deficit. But protocols that maximize muscle preservation in a deficit would probably carry over to what would be optimal in a calorie surplus. And timing and distribution of protein would probably matter even less in a surplus. Finally, the study population is really important because timing and distribution might matter a lot more for one group than it would for another. For example, protein distribution might matter more for trained than non-trained people, since those new to lifting weights can build muscle even in pretty suboptimal conditions. And the amount and distribution of protein might matter more for older people than younger, since older people show a blunted anabolic response to protein, needing more protein to elicit the same effects. And protein distribution might also matter more for lean people than people carrying a little extra body fat, since people with higher body fat have more energy stores to draw from to build and preserve muscle in a deficit. Protein timing is a lot less important than people gave it credit for five to 10 years ago. It seems that if there is some advantage to distributing protein throughout four to five meals during a day, it's a lot less significant than what we might have thought. But all that being said, there aren't a whole lot of long-term, well-designed studies in certain populations that can fully answer this question. So I would say that the jury's still out. And my recommendation would be that if you're really concerned about gaining muscle or preserving as much muscle as possible in a deficit, you might want to eat that 20 to 40 grams of protein and spread that out four to five times per day. It certainly can't hurt anything, and it can only help. And this matters if you're a competitive bodybuilder or if you're a serious athlete. But for a lot of people, the effort of hitting that leucine threshold and spacing out meals four to five times per day just isn't worth the stress. So if that describes you, don't worry about it. Just make sure to hit your total protein for the day and you won't be missing out on that much. As always, how you eat should be enjoyable and sustainable for you. So don't stress over the details.